Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Games video. Today we're trying out a very experimental build with some awesome synergies titled Truth or Lie. We're playing with See the Truth and Valky, God of Lies. These two may not have the most obvious synergy, although if you cast Tybalt, Cosmic Imposter, and then potentially exile See the Truth with the plus two ability, then once we cast See the Truth, it turns into a two mana draw three. But the main reason we're playing See the Truth is that it's a great combo with the Arcane Proxy at three. So first we play See the Truth for two mana, get to look at the top three to choose one of the cards and put it into our hand, and then see the truth ends up in our graveyard, where on turn three we could already replay it with Arcane Proxy, and because we're actually casting See the Truth, we will get to draw all three cards now, so that's the secret mode of See the Truth, so that's one awesome synergy. Then we're also playing a Release to the Wind alongside a Valky, God of Lies, so we can play a turn two Valky, take a look at the opponent's hand, see if the coast is clear, maybe exile a creature for a turn, and then on turn three we can Release to the Wind, targeting Valky, and then I will exile it and be able to replay it for free, but this time we're not going to play Valky, instead we play Tybalt, Cosmic Imposter, so we can pull that off on turn 3, and then get the 7 mana Planeswalker, can provide more card advantage with all its various activated abilities, exiling cards, as we can replay those cards from exile, even if Tybalt leaves the battlefield, since we'll still have that emblem, and then the plus 2 is a way, as we said, to maybe find our own See the Truth to draw 3 as well, as well as maybe find cards from the opponent's deck, and then the minus 3 can also be an answer that that can still be replayed from Exile. And then we've got another neat synergy with Frexen Fleshgorger as another prototype creature. We can also exile it with Release to the Wind and then replay it as its 7 mana version, which will now be a 7 5 with Menace and Lifelink and Ward, making the opponent pay life equal to its power if they want to target it with any spells. And then, of course, we can also exile Arcane Proxy itself to maybe get back more expensive spells, although for the most part, Release to the Wind is better with our Fleshgorger. Also, have two copies of Malachi Rebirth as a way to maybe save our creature from removal and in the case of Flash Gorger, it will also come back as a 7-5 as opposed to a 3-3. can also pull that off with Arcane Proxy, but in that case we won't be able to replay any spells from our graveyard since we didn't cast the proxy, so Rebirth is also much better with the Flash Gorger. So yeah, these are the synergies we're trying to pull off, and then the rest of the deck has a ton of interaction, and one mana full set of Fatal Push, and four copies of Thoughtseize to take a look at the opponent's hand and take away a non-land card at the cost of two life. can also be replayed with a three mana Arcane Proxy if necessary, Necessary, and then two copies of Go for the Throat as another very useful removal spell we can cast at instant speed, can answer cards like Grease Fang, which we usually won't be able to take out with Fatal Push, so that's also very important. And then at 4 mana, playing the full set of Extinction Event, and this is mainly a nod to the Green Devotion decks, which have a lot of oddly costed creatures. You've got your 1 mana Elves, at 3 mana you've got Old Growth Troll, and at 5 mana Cavalier. So being able to exile all of them with Extinction Event also means our opponent doesn't get the enchantment from the Troll, and doesn't get to return anything from the Graveyard with Cavalier. So I've found Extinction Event to be quite useful in the current meta, and we can also maybe replay it with a 7 mana Arcane Proxy, as we can now get back a spell with mana of value 4 or less, as opposed to 2 or less. And then the mana base has a few goodies, with two copies of Castle Lochthwain to draw additional cards in the longer games, and then Hive, another way to maybe exile cards from the opponent's graveyard, as well as apply pressure to Planeswalkers, which our build is pretty weak to, since we don't have clean answers to Planeswalkers, so just have to try and attack them with our creatures, which doesn't always work out. And then a Soaring City can also be channeled for added interaction, Got an island, two swamps, and then a ton of blue-black dual lands, as well as two blue-red dual lands in case we're in the late game and we want to try and hard cast our Tybalt and don't necessarily have the release to the wind combo available. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. And while we don't have any of our two-card combos, we still have some good interaction. So we'll try it. Can Thought Season 1, turn to see the truth, to maybe hit our land drops, or if we did find a few lands, our game proxy would be great. Opponent on Green Devotion, so Extinction Events can be great. We're pretty weak to Planeswalkers, so either Nissa or Kiora could be the pick. Gonna be a while before they can play Nissa, especially if we take Kiora to untap Haven. So I could see taking Cura first, since that can also provide extra card advantage.
and uh, Malaki Rebirth can go with Flesh Gorger. So we'll see the truth. Finding push doesn't do much. So I think I just take the untapped land. Next turn, play Flesh Gorger most likely. Problem with playing Flesh Gorger is that it potentially plays into our own extinction event. Opponent with lots of havens. Okay, castle's untapped at least. So we can Flesh Gorger. Next turn, our opponent will be able to play Nissa already. Extinction event on even at least deals with the forest if they animate it, and so it does go for the throat, so they may not even turn a land into a creature. And menace means we can attack past the troll at least. Opponent goes for a cavalier. That's more effective. Lines of forest. So what do we want to do? Can hit for three, gain three. We could stay back, chump Malachi Rebirth to get a 7-5. All their opponents still going to be able to go over the top with Nyssa and Nykthos. What did they mill? Karn as something to maybe get back once they produce a lot of mana. So that's no good. So we really want to exile the Cavalier when given the chance. So do I just activate Castle here at the cost of a bunch of life? Yeah, it's a tricky spot. Could just hang on to go for the throats and castle. And then uh, wait and see what our opponent does. And for now, Flesh Gorger can attack. Killing Cavalier to deny some devotion is another strategy, but uh, don't necessarily love giving them a Karn. Then what happens? Opponent plays Nyssa, puts Karn on top. We won't be able to kill Nyssa. Although, I guess they could animate Forest, which we can Extinction Event on even. Still pretty messy. So maybe we just wait for them to commit more creatures before we Extinction Event on Odd. And then go for the Throat, can maybe handle Nyssa in the meantime. Another Cavalier. Okay, at least our Extinction Event is getting better. So don't feel as bad exiling my own Flesh Gorger. And there's a troll. Okay, let's activate castle at the cost of quite a bit of life. Thoughtseize, okay, I'll take it. And then we might as well attack with Flash Gorger first to get our three life opponent maven take it. So now we're back in business. That's why Extinction Event is in the deck. Storm the Festival, that was a good top deck. Alright, so could still be in trouble. Finds Harbinger. Does have Hexproof from Black, so we won't be able to target it with Go for the Throat. So we're just playing a tapped Watery Grave and then uh, maybe activating a Castle. Could have also played a Shipwreck Marsh to maybe kill a different creature. And then we can still Castle and take one less damage, since we have fewer cards in hand. There's also a Lair of the Hydra to worry about, but I'm happy to take that out. Okay, opponent animates a 7-7 Lair. We'll wait for it to turn sideways. So slightly regretting my choice of tap land here, since we might have been able to also activate Castle. Still in a bit of trouble here, with Harbinger finding more creatures. Finds Cavalier. And our opponent with a backup Lair. Okay, Arcane Proxy gets back See the Truth. Could also play a 7-mana version to get back Extinction Events, but I think we're happy drawing 3. Could also Thoughtseize Cavalier, but I think we're going to need another Extinction Event. Eventually. So this can find one. Okay, found a Thoughtseize anyway. Now we could also play Flesh Gorger, keep up Malachi Rebirth. Opponent's at 14. No, I think we'd rather still get rid of Cavalier. And then could play a 3-mana Flesh Gorger to make sure we don't die. 
And we'll see if they want to trade for it or not. So now they can flashback storm the festival. Just two lands. Okay, so we have to worry about Lair of the Hydra, but now we have Rebirth available. So let's see here, probably fine to play a tapped Grave. Rebirth, not really a combo with Arcane Proxy, but good with Flash Gorger. So that's gonna cost me two life. Can jump Lair with Flash Gorger to gain three and then turn it into a 7-5. And then we can still draw with Castle. So it's been a swingy game. Still have a lot of good top decks remaining since we can now hard cast our prototypes. Now if they attack with both creatures, I'll trade Flash Gorger for Harbinger and then Proxy can jump. Okay, opponent makes a 5-5 layer since I guess that's lethal. Sends them both. Alright, let's hope this works. Back up to six, get Flash Gorger back. And then pay three for Castle, seems worth it. Opponent has another Harbinger as a follow up. Okay, we well need to find some more answers. Another Flash Gorger will do. Can't quite cast Tybalt since we don't have the rat for it. But uh, yeah, let's get in for seven. Play Flesh Gorger. And then we can play Valky as a chump blocker. And our opponent explodes. Awesome, a very close game against Green Devotion. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing a Yorion deck. And what do we think of our hand? Fatal push, typically not great against Yorion. Releasing Flash Gorger seems a bit slow and is probably not going to work out. So we're hoping that an early thought season, then maybe see the truth for Arcane Proxy is good enough, which seems unlikely. So I'll take a mulligan. This is better. Probably get rid of Extinction Event, just keep Hand Disruption and see the truth. And sure, we'll uh, play a Thought Season 1. Can play another one on turn 3. Put on a 5-color Enigmatic Incarnation deck. And what do we take? Probably Fable early on. And then later maybe the Leyline Binding. And now we can play this on black. Try and find an Arcane Proxy. There we go. So that'll draw 3 next turn. Presence means our opponent's got a one mana binding now. Okay, so we're off to a good start. Another Thought Season hand. A release can maybe set up another draw three on See the Truth. Although ideally we can combine it with Valky. Opponent puts Yorion in hand. So we can have a look with Thoughtseize. And see Binding plus Yorion, so our opponent only drew lands. Well, I guess we'll take the Binding. Can maybe Disrupt or Valky combo. And we can keep the second Thoughtseize for later. For now, just uh, see the truth. Maybe we pick up a tap land we want to play out here. Well, there's Valky, so that seems good. So, just need an untapped land now to play Valky and release it in the same turn. So this game could not have gone much better for us. Fable would have let them discard two lands and draw. So we were able to disrupt that, and then now, at least as far as we know, opponent doesn't have any answers to Valky being released. And of course we can have a look with Valky. So make sure that's the case. 
If our opponent tries to binding in response, of course we've got the instant speed release, and our opponent actually drew another ley line binding. Okay, so how do we play this now? Can't really go for release. If we thought seize, they can exile Valky in response. So I think we just have to pass. They may go for binding on Valky, and then we can release it. And then our opponent will be able to play Yorion to flicker binding at some points. But uh, we've got another Thoughtseize, and if they play Yorion next turn, they wouldn't be able to hit Valky slash Tybalt. So that worked out. Fires to play Orion for free. Not a big deal. So the problem now is if her opponent top decks Enigmatic Incarnation, sacrifices Binding to get a 7 drop. They can flicker the Presence at least to draw. And then they might get rid of Arcane Proxy too. But that we don't really care about too much. Okay, let's play Tybalt after maybe checking if the coast is clear. Sure. Okay, snipe an Omnath. And then Tybalt probably starts plussing. Fires doesn't seem very useful for me. So I can go for the throw to Yorion before it does any damage. And we'll play this on the red, in case we need to hardcast Tybalt later. And then we still have a release available. And our opponent explodes. Awesome, so we managed to outgrind the Enigmatic Incarnation deck, thanks to a perfect start. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Outside of our lands coming into play tapped, our hands got potential, with Thoughtseize clearing a path for Valky plus release. Although it may end up being a tad too slow here, out of the gates. And then what we'll land to play turn 1, probably still Castle, since we're more likely to play Shipwreck untapped. Opponent with turn 1 Mystic. So it looks like Black Green Elves. So Extinction Event's gonna be good. Never mind, a Fight Rigging deck. And uh, they're pretty far from playing Henge. Of course, Ronas could be a way to enable it. So maybe we just take Ronas and strand them with a bunch of cards that don't do anything by themselves. Even though Extinction Event on Odd would be quite effective here. It's just going to take us a while to get there. Valky also would have been a way to exile a creature, but not in time. So, fight rigging it is. And then our opponent's got some scary top decks. But, uh, yeah. Can play Valky as opposed to Arcane Proxy, get back Thoughtseize, but if they had a large creature, we probably would have seen it already. Could take a second fight rigging. I think we Valky and then uh, try and get our Tybalt online as soon as possible. So, not shocked that our opponent's out of creatures. And another fight rigging, so Mystic can turn into a 4 4. Might have to exile Mystic with Tybalt, just to make sure our Planeswalker is not under too much pressure. And the large Mystic could also enable Henge, although Henge is something we can exile with Tybalt. So first attack for two, get that value. And then we can release... Player Planeswalker. And XL Mystic, which I'll play. And then if we really need to minus three Tybalt again, we could release it. So we can uh, minus a second time. After, of course, plussing first. Okay, start by plussing. Now we've got an instant speed answer to a larger creature. And see the truth with Tybalt means we get to draw three, so that's another neat combo. Okay. And then Arcane Proxy could draw again, although I don't want to get ahead of myself and be tapped out of Go for the Throat. So instead, can use Mystic to see the truth again. 
hang on to go for the throats in case her opponent killed the mystic end of turn. And find probably not her see the truth. Don't expect my opponent to remove the bolts. Where I would need a backup. So her opponent's falling further and further behind. Might actually want to play a Lance from hand as opposed to Exile if we end up discarding to hand size to the Arcane Proxy here. Let's draw three more. Not too worried about having to Thought Seize them. Okay, and then I play a land from hand. Attack for one. Keep up, go for the throat. And I can discard a land. Okay, there's Gargroth, so before they get any additional counters, we'll take it out. And our opponent explodes, yeah, just too far behind thanks to an early Tybalt. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and is missing an arcane proxy ideally, but we can maybe find one. So I'll keep it up against a red aggro, so Flash Gorger is going to come in handy. Still okay to Thought Seize, maybe take away a high impact card. Opponent's going to play with Fire in Response. And what is our opponent working with? A lot of burn. Uh, light up the stage to maybe two for one us. So it's either light up the stage or skewer, which is an answer to Flash Gorger. I think I still should take the light up out of principle. A lava runner with haste already, so yeah, we kind of enabled it for them. Opponent hangs on to their skewer the critics. So could just play Valky as a creature that gets shocked here. Probably we don't have time to see the truth. And otherwise I'm happy to trade Valky for Lava Runner. And then currently they don't have a third land to cast a regular Skewer. They would need to enable Spectacle first. And with triple Flash Gorger, as long as one of them sticks, we should be okay. Just need to make sure we don't die in the meantime. Okay, play with fire down to 10. Gonna have to shock ourselves to play Flesh Gorger. There's Arcane Proxy to eventually go with See the Truth. Okay. So, if they've got like an end of turn Wizard's Lightning. We could technically die next turn to double Secure the Critics. And that seems to be what's happening. Okay. So we're at a virtual 3 life. Pyromancer puts us to 1, essentially. Okay, so if I play Flesh Gorger, opponent draws an untapped land, we die. Although most of the cards they draw that aren't lands are probably things that can deal at least 1 or 2 damage. So, yeah, not loving our position, but I uh, think it's our only play here. Are we dead? Maybe like a light up the stage they won't be able to cast. Opponent attacks, definitely blocking. So we're at five. And a skewer going after Flash Gorger. Okay. So we're still in it. Can see the truth, play another Flash Gorger. And a rebirth could maybe transform it. Although costing two life means I'm unlikely to play a rebirth. Another Pyromancer puts us to three. So if I attack, 
and our opponent double blocks, which isn't very likely. I could rebirth, end up at 4 life with a tapped 7 powered Flash Gorger, and then I can play Arcane Proxy, which uh, can draw 3, maybe should start there. And then hopefully pick up a Fatal Push. Okay, find Fatal Push and Thoughtseize. So, step one attack. Opponent takes it. In which case, uh, yeah, we'll just let damage happen. And then I think I just play a tapped rebirth at this point. Pass with Fatal Push up as opposed to casting another See the Truth. And our opponent explodes, all right, the third Flesh Gorger gets the job done. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Got to turn one Thought Seize and then see the truth to maybe find Release to the Wind for Valky. We'll try it. Opponent with a turn one Elf. And then we've got Red Mana to maybe play Tybalt as well. So our opponent on Elf, Tribal can take an elite. So we will eventually need an extinction event to reset the board. For now we can see the truth. And there's extinction event. Which would have been a reason to give them the Dwinnens elites and take a one mana creature instead. Okay, release to go with Valky, that's exciting. So, yeah, we can play Valky now. And then next turn we can decide if we want to release or extinction event on odd first. Company scary. Finds Realmwalker Warmaster. So yeah, extinction event on odd seems good here. Other opponent will still have some cards left over. Another extinction event. Well, we can, over the course of two turns, exile everything. May not be able to keep Valky around. If our opponent gets very aggressive, so we can trade it for a Warmaster. Another Elite, alright, so at least that's all even. So, opponent hitting us for 4, yeah, there's no way I can transform Valky and then wait on the Extinction event, so we might as well save ourselves some damage. And then it's going to be Empty Board versus castle to hopefully pull us ahead. And then release to go with any of our prototype creatures. Realmwalker of the top is scary, so I might be forced to already extinction event here for one creature. Flesh Gorger is uh, tempting. So now I can Flesh Gorger release it, play a 7 mana version. Or we can extinction event on odd first. Usually the elf deck has more evenly costed lords that we might want to get rid of. But uh, yeah, I don't want Realmwalker to provide a ton of card advantage, so I'll just deal with it now. Hope they miss for a turn, and then we can set up our 7-powered Flash Gorger. Circle of Dreams is fine, and Arcane Proxy is pretty nice too. Get back, see the truth. And then we can still play a Flash Gorger if we'd like. Okay. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So a nice game against the elf deck, showing off our extinction event once again. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand has potential. Some early removal, see the truth, plus uh, arcane proxy eventually. Just need another blue source. 
Bone and blue white, so it could be control. Never mind, Ornithopter points towards artifact synergies. Don't think I need to fatal push Ornithopter. And we don't really need a release, so I'll grab a watery grave, since we can also use more black mana for castle. Go for the throat could be a little awkward, but opponent might still have creatures like Ingenious Smith, which we can target. And then for now, let us draw three. And then next turn extinction event on even could be quite effective. And we can discard a pain land. Opponent with a Reign of Truth pumping their creature. And another Ornithopter. Probably wanted to sequence that differently to get one extra power. Well, this extinction event's gonna be pretty brutal. Assuming it resolves, because their opponent could have a Metallic Rebuke in hand. So, to play around that, maybe just play a land pass. And then push whatever creature they try and pump. Bait out a rebuke and then untap an extinction event. And sure, I might as well attack since we're not gonna block most likely. Opponent targeting automaton. So, sure, I'll push now, let them tap out for rebuke. Although they can tap double ornithopter and still maybe have a second rebuke available. I guess we'll wait and see what else they do. Ingenious Smith, like we suspected, also dies to an extinction event on even. So yeah, I think this is a decent setup for it. But now they're fully tapped out, so this extinction event's gonna be incredibly backbreaking. And I can save myself seven damage which is probably worth it. And a backup extinction event. I've got uh, Go for the Throat to deal with uh, Reign of Truth once it transforms. So... Let's wipe the board. And attack for two. Got our red mana too, just in case. So let's say we go for the throat, portrait, and then we can still play a uh, flesh gorger, which maybe gets countered. Hang on to our cane proxy. That seemed to resolve pretty swiftly. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, possible they had some removal in hand like Portable Hole that doesn't hit any of our creatures. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and we've got See the Truth into our game proxy. Missing some interaction, but I'll keep. And then we can maybe release our Flesh Gorger into a 7-5. Our mana's good too. Facing a red-green. And what do we want? Valky to go with the release. Looks good. Don't know if I want to play Valky next turn already. Kind of depends whether or not we suspect Valky will get removed. A Ranger class? Okay. So I could Valky and Fatal Push. And then uh, wait a bit to draw with Proxy until we've emptied our hand a bit more too. That seems fine. We'll see what they're working with. And yeah, no removal for Valky is good. Next turn, the scariest they could play is Spellbreaker. So I'll probably take the Spellbreaker. And then we can wait on Fatal Push. Hope they didn't draw a Bonecrusher Giant in the meantime. 
Then we burning tree plus lander elves. Nope, opponent drew the bone crusher, that's unfortunate. Okay, so no releasing Valky. So we'll be releasing a Flash Gorger instead. And there's Alf. So yeah, that's a setback. Can push the wolf. And then next turn opponent gets to play a Questing Beast. Extinction Event on Even looks pretty good here if it gets rid of a Questing Beast and a Burning Tree. So now I think I'm still happy to play a Flash Gorger. And hope they don't play their oddly costed creatures first. But Questing Beast would make a lot of sense since it can also help block a Flash Gorger. Okay. We'll take four. And attack for three. Opponent gets to hit us back with a Spellbreaker, perhaps. But we've still got our proxy to draw three, to hopefully find more answers. And we can always decide to release the Flash Gorger to make it into a 7-5. All their opponents got enough creatures back where they can actually trade for it pretty easily. So we'll probably take the more controlling approach. Well, back up Valky, we're one mana short of uh, combining with release, so let's try and hit our land drops and then we can still maybe play Valky afterwards. And there we go. Let's see what they have. Embercleave? Uh oh, that's gonna be scary. But uh, yeah, not going to be able to block all that well, so might as well attack. And then uh, Tybalt might exile Hembercleave, we'll see. Opponent can tap the Alpha mana after attacking with just Spellbreaker. So that would hit us for 12. That's a lot. Could also just exile the Spellbreaker itself, which may be better. So no point in blocking. Okay, at least our opponent's tapped out. So we can attack first and then release Valky. And I guess we could release it twice if we want to activate our uh, Planeswalker twice, which could also be fun. Could, I guess, release Valky, release Proxy, wipe the board, and then still have a uh, Tybalt in play. Don't know if that's necessary. So let's send these two key proxy back just in case. Release Valky. Play Tybalt. Exiling Spellbreaker. And then do we just release Flash Gorger here? That seems reasonable, could play a large Spellbreaker on defense. But uh, yeah, releasing Flash Gorger is more fun, so let's do that. Possible I was better off attacking with Arcane Proxy in that case to put our opponent to 7, so Flash Gorger is lethal. Although I'm sure we can figure out a win next turn. So yeah, getting to see all our cool synergies in action. Even if Tybalt was delayed by a little bit. Okay, so opponent does not have a great double block on Flesh Gorger. Uh, Tybalt wants to plus. Arcane Proxy could also get back Fatal Push to kill the Wolf token. And we can play one from Exile. And then maybe play Hasty Spellbreaker. And that might be game here. Attack with all, and our opponent should be taking at least 9 damage. Well, that was a pretty clean game overall. So yeah, despite getting Ember cleaved in the face, our synergies were still good enough to get us there. Awesome. 
All right, so we got to see our Truth or Lie deck in action, and it definitely had some impressive moments, so pretty fun deck to see in action. Now, I don't think it's necessarily quite there yet to face the ranked ladder, since some of the popular decks out there are very tough matchups. Thinking about the Grease Fang matchup, for instance, where we don't have a lot of instant speed answers to the three drop, just have go for the throat, whereas Fatal Push often falls short. And then, even if we do manage to maybe take away a Grease Fang with hand disruption, our opponent usually still has ways to get it back and over power us and uh, if we play a longer game which we typically want to do with our deck they'll eventually get uh, Parhelion in play and kill us so that's not a matchup we're often going to win and then there's decks like mono blue spirits that can easily counter some of our key cards and never let our synergies flourish so overall I don't think it's quite there yet for the rank ladder but as kind of a casual deck to play in the regular play queue it's a ton of fun so that's going to do it for today's gameplay want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.